morning everyone, it is Wednesday, April 10th today, and welcome back to the vlog. I have a midterm today, so I'm gonna be efficient this morning, so I'm not gonna mince words here. Here's the schedule for the day, let's get to it. There was one funny question on it um, where it, it was like a, a structural induction question um, and so they gave us the start of the proof uh, and then didn't read the question very carefully but it kind of just looked to me like okay finish the proof so I finished the proof and I was like wow that's actually kind of a hard proof and then I keep reading and I realized that they finished the proof they only wanted us to fill out the base cases and I felt like an idiot because I just spent like 10 minutes doing the proof and I mean I got the proof right but like all I needed to do was write down two base cases and instead I did the entire inductive stuff. Anyways, I haven't really made a video about school in a while and, you know, it being towards the end of midterm season, final season just around the corner, I figured it's a good time to kind of start talking about how I study for tests. Okay, so my first strategy is kind of just talking about how to interact during the school year during classes. And there's really uh, two major parts to this, but the first one is kind of a no-brainer. It's just eliminate distractions, okay? So when you're in class, phone away, laptop away, all technology away. I honestly don't really sit near my friends either. I kind of just isolate myself um, because the purpose is to be learning in that moment. The thought process with this is that you know, if I can pay really close attention during these, you know, 60 to 90 minute whatever classes, then later on when I'm studying, I don't have to cram and relearn information. I can just remind myself about it. Now, another way that you can do this, another way that you promote retention, the best way is by taking notes. And taking notes effectively is an art. But here are a few things that you can do. One, take notes by hand, don't type them. Taking notes by hand is a lot better for retention. So if the professor is working at a pace where you can take notes by hand, which most professors or teachers will do, um, then take notes by hand. And don't write verbatim what the professor says, okay? Paraphrase what they're saying in a way that both shortens things, but also requires you to think and to understand the information in the moment. Finally, when you're taking your notes, organize them hierarchically. So what I mean by this is don't just kind of write a flat list of information going down, you know, the page and, and at the end of the lecture you have 20 or 30 things to remember that aren't organized in any way. Many professors and teachers will organize their lectures for you hierarchically. So there'll be kind of three main sections, four subsections in each one. But even if your teacher doesn't do that, you can kind of pay attention to when things are broken up by concept and you can group your notes in that way. So I just indent and I use headings in my notes when I'm taking them by hand. What this does is it promotes retention because the way that your brain works is it can remember hierarchies and trees a lot better than it can remember lists. Okay, so the magic number for this is four plus or minus two chunks of information. So what this means is that if you have one big topic broken up into four subtopics, each of those subtopics are broken up into four more and so on, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to remember these things without having to go back and revise your notes and without having to kind of create these really long, weird kind of reminders in your head. If you have an idea of the hierarchy about how these ideas fit together, things are gonna be a lot easier for you. So during the school year, eliminate distractions in class and take your notes in a way that works really well for you. I recommend handwritten notes with a clear hierarchy in terms of concepts. Okay, so a lot of professors are gonna tell you, you know, start studying three weeks out, maybe even a month out. Um, and honestly, I find that this is just kind of infeasible. Um, just, you know, with life, with overlapping tests, with extracurricular, is it, I don't wanna be, you know, constantly studying for a midterm that's a month away. It just isn't how I operate. And that's just me being honest and realistic. If it's how you operate, great. But I find that for a hard test, if I start studying seven days before, I can do really well. And if it's an easy test and I start studying three days before, I'm gonna do really well as well. So the question though is, what do you do at the start of this study period? How do you orient your study? And what I do is I create uh, what I've heard people call a crib sheet or, or just simply a cheat sheet. And what this does is you basically go through your notes for the period that the test is gonna be. So all semester or the weeks leading up to the test, 
whatever the test is covering, and you just write out on basically one sheet of paper, front and back, every major concept, and you try and explain it to yourself. And in a sense, you're going through a, a summary of the course in one page, front and back. So you want it to be comprehensive in that it'll cover all of the concepts that are going to be on the test, but it doesn't need to cover every last minute detail about, for example, if it's a math or a science test, how to solve all of these problems. You just need to know the types of problems and the concepts associated with them. Because once you have that organizational structure set up, that's how you can really start getting ready for the test. All right, so once you have your cheat sheet or your crib sheet, at this point you can start doing practice problems. So you have some idea of how the course fits together, about the organization of the concepts. And now all that you're gonna do is go through each concept and do a problem that you think might be on the test. So teachers might provide these, you might be able to find these online, you might be able to make them up, you might be able to find them in a textbook, wherever you find these problems. What matters is that you're being comprehensive about the concepts covered in the course that will be on the test. And honestly, if I feel like I'm really comfortable with one of the major concepts, I'll just do one or two practice problems. It doesn't really matter. If you're feeling comfortable and confident, then as long as that confidence isn't unfounded, which you can tell pretty easily by doing a couple of practice problems, you're gonna be good to go. What matters is that you focus on the areas where you're weak. Okay, so if there's a concept that maybe, you know, you just weren't feeling it in lecture or you just really struggle with, that's where you focus your energy. So you focus primarily on the problems that are going to be hard because they're still gonna show up on the test. You can't just kind of like pray and hope they don't show up, they'll be there. So this is what I'm doing kind of leading up from creating the crib sheet to about a day before the test. So around 24 hours before a test, you start to have this trade-off between your cognitive abilities on test taking day and the amount of information that you can cram. So for certain people, if you don't start studying until 24 hours out, maybe cramming's gonna help. Obviously, it's not gonna work as well as if you've been, you know, studying for the past week. You're not gonna do as well no matter what. But if you have been studying for the past week, cramming is only gonna give you a very limited amount of return, right? This is a little bit like the 80-20 principle, only honestly, I'd say it's like the 95-5 rule. So what's important for me at this period then, rather than to, to start cramming or to try and fit as much information in my brain as possible, is actually to just start making really good life decisions. So if you're, you know, 24 hours out the night before from a test, right? What's critical? You get a lot of sleep, okay? That's the most important thing to me. If I'm before a test, if I get nine hours of sleep, I know I'm gonna crush it, okay? But if I get, you know, six hours of sleep, it's not gonna go so well. And the reason being is that when you get less sleep, your cognitive abilities are lessened, right? So if you're really well prepared for this test, but you're functioning at like 60% because you only got six hours of sleep, well then you're not gonna do as well as if you got nine hours of sleep and you're functioning at 100%, even if you got those extra, you know, three hours of practice problems in, right? You have to be able to weigh those things and understand that making good decisions is gonna be more beneficial than studying more information. Really the idea here is to, to control the controllables and to give yourself as many little advantages as possible to optimize your test taking ability. So increase your cognitive abilities by getting a lot of sleep, by eating the right food, by exercising a little bit, and uh, by having a little bit of caffeine if that's something that you partake in. If not, I mean, no worries, right? Usually for me, what this looks like is like a cup of coffee like an hour before the exam. It's nothing crazy. I'm not someone that's like downing Red Bulls. I just, you know, Think about when am I gonna have my coffee today? Okay, now finally it's what do you do when you're in the test? And this is gonna change from test to test, but what I think is important here is that you've got your mindset right. So the mindset that I like to kind of cultivate going into a test is this idea that this is a competition, right? It's like a game. It's like in a soccer game, right? You've been practicing all year and it's your time to kind of show off. It's your time to, to show off all of the hard work that you put in, to show off all of the strategies that you've you know, evolved to, to follow and just see what you can do, right? So that's kind of the, the, what I try and put in my head rather than all this stress about, oh, I gotta do well on this, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. No, 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 it's all about, yeah, how well can I do? You know? So if your mind is in this place where you are excited to write this test because it's affording you the opportunity to kind of just show off, then you're gonna crush it. You're gonna do incredibly well. 
Now, if you're in the mindset where you're really stressed out and you're really kind of in your own head about things, then what you're doing again is you're spending some of your, your cognitive abilities, you're, you're taking on a cognitive load for something other than the test, right? You're in the back of your mind where you could be thinking about problems. Instead, you're thinking about what happens if you fail. Recognize that for what it is, just a destructive thought that is just impinging on your mind and then let it go and allow yourself to be filled with this kind of excitement and this, this playfulness that is, you know, just see what you can do. What I find when I follow these strategies and when I put this mindset into practice is I do extremely well on tests. And I recognize that this is, you know, maybe just me, uh, but I think a lot of these strategies apply to a lot of people. Um, that being said, everyone is gonna be in a bit of a different situation. So what I'd recommend is, you know, if you're someone that struggles with taking tests, maybe try applying these studying techniques and these mindsets and, and figure out, you know, what works and what doesn't and modify it and look at other people and what they do and figure out what works best for you. Everything's gonna be individualized. There is no one general formula, but there is a formula that's going to work for you. So that was how I take tests. Back to the vlog. All right, so that's the end of the day. Uh, pretty good day, went to class, uh, got my midterm done, it went pretty well, had a great workout. Um, and now I'm just gonna work on editing this video, uh, do a little bit of schoolwork, but I don't have a ton to do tomorrow. Uh, and maybe do some reading before bed. So yeah, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more content like this.